Hello and welcome, I'm Ari Lax, and tonight I'm back from the Pro Tour, I'm back from having to test Standard in Draft Salon, and we get to play some fun stuff in Modern. Um, so tonight, we're going to start with Slivers. Uh, so with humans winning a bunch, it's pretty clear that it's time to re-examine a lot of tribal decks. And the one that kind of pops out as gaining the most from Unclaimed Territory, because it was already a 5-color deck, is Slivers. Um, looking at the new mana, you have the full 16. Uh, you get Sliver Hive in addition to all the traditional uh, human-style 5-color lands. But you have 16 lands that make any color, and then Muta Vaults, um, which are actually pretty important to this deck. Uh, it's more Lord-based than human, so every additional attacker is a lot of damage. Um, so with all these 5-color lands, you just get to never get mana screwed. Um, previously, the list played Sedge Liver, which forced you to play some swamps and do, do all sorts of stuff I don't want to deal with. You can just draw hands that can't cast your spells, which is stupid. Um, I, I don't want to have to think about what colors of mana I have, even though this deck is mostly Esper Splash Green or something like that. I just I don't want to deal with it. Um, so my mana is going to work every game that I draw lands. That's great. Uh, this list, I took another key from humans, and I cut Collected Company. Um, not only can you not cast it, and it forces you to play these lands that sometimes line up wrong with your 1-drops, um, I think the deck can actually just be fast enough that it doesn't really want that card. So, <clears throat> I am maxing out on 2 drop. well, not maxing, there's, um, oh, let's get this one up. Frenzy Sliver I could be playing. I'm not sure if I want some of these or not. Um, I haven't actually tried this card yet. I've tried a lot of this stuff already, so I have a good idea of most of it. But Frenzy Sliver is on the, the to-do list. Um, it's a weird ability. It's conditionally good. It doesn't help you get anywhere. Uh, I'm skeptical I want more than two-ish, but it might be good. Um, <clears throat> but we have Leeching Sliver, which is uh, guaranteed damage on every attack. And then Sinew and Predatory Sliver that let you go large and wide. Uh... You are then higher on one drops because uh, you don't have to support the odds of hitting two good things with Collected Company. Uh, Gale Rider Sliver is just the super obvious one. This card is unbelievably good in the Sliver's deck. Uh, everything having flying is really stupid. And if you've been following my Twitter exploits, uh, there's a lot of fun stuff that happens with this card in Aether Vial. Um, I'm maxing out on Mind Lash Slivers. I think this card is kind of exciting and lets you steal games against matchups you otherwise would be unable to by um, liking them discard cards. You can also get effective time walks if your opponent goes hellbent against it because um, it is an instant speed discard effect. And I've actually not had a huge issue activating it. Usually you have some extra cards some of the time. Um, and then I've I elected for Sidewinder Sliver as the last one drop. It was between this and... Striking Sliver, um, which is Slivers have First Strike. And I went with Sidewinder because I think... Um, so in the case of, like... There's, like, a very narrow case where I think Striking Sliver is better. It involves, like, weird creature sizing. Um, I think Sidewinder Sliver is m just as effective against, like, Lingering Souls. Um, actually, it involves, like, weird multiple blocks, to be honest. Um, but... Against Lingering Souls, I would be about even, but against like a slightly larger creature, like a 3-4 Tarmogoyf, I'd much rather have the card that lets me push my creatures effectively up one um, once they get into combat. Uh, don't ask why Slivers gain flanking. I guess both abilities are from Dominaria. Now that Slivers move from Wrath, I don't know. It makes no sense. Time Spiral, it was basically an onset. Um... On the note of onset, Frenzy is coming back in unstable on, I believe, Garbage Elemental, which was kind of a I feel like that's kind of a funny joke about how Future Sight is basically an onset as well. Anyways, off of the one drops and the obvious Ether Vial, one of the best cards in the deck. Um, I have Diffusion Sliver, which is really the reason to play this deck over humans. You can play a lot of lords and humans. You can go like Mayor and uh, presumably you could play like a, a Battle Cry creature too and just get like the same go wide effect. Um, but without Diffusion Sliver to protect your stuff, the Slivers deck would not be doing anything unique, um, whereas this deck can le legitimately say, like, oh, I'm just going to put my things into play, and you can't reliably interact with them because you just can't cast your spells on them. Um, and then I have Mana West Sliver. Um, I've been asked uh, why this card's in the deck, and the answer is you don't draw Aether Vial every game. Sometimes you got to deploy a bunch of stuff. Um, also, the extra mana lets you use Sliver Hive effectively, um, 
And it lets you more reliably cast your sideboard three drops or your main deck three drops. Um, it lets you use Necrotic Sliver, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, let you have four drops. I think it's just a fine magic card. I don't know if I want three or four. The number's a little wonky because you can also play um, Gem Hide Sliver if you wanted even up to eight. Uh, but without company, I don't think you want that many. So I'm not sure. It, you can balance that. So moving up to the high end, because really anything over two is the high end in this deck. Um, I like Necrotic Sliver, I think, because it lets you attack opponents on a different axis than the rest of your deck's trying to do. It lets you punch through some of the cards that the rest of your deck can't really handle. Um, I have a Shadow Sliver that I'm not 100% sold on, um, but I just want to try it because I think the effect is really powerful to have. Um, you can't... The unfortunate part of moving to this dedicated mana is I don't think you can reasonably play Homing Sliver. Uh, which would let you add effectively a copy of this and make your sideboard a little more consistent. But I think that card's just a little too slow. Uh, let's look this one up. We've got Homing Sliver, uh, which is Sliver Cycling. Don't worry, these things don't make sense. Um, you can cycle it stuff to tutor for a sliver. Um, and that would be kind of like the, the upside to these one drops. And then I initially was testing um, multiple four drops in the deck. Um, and I wasn't sure which was better, but I kept drawing multiple, so I was kind of off of it. And the option was Bone Size Sliver, which is double strike all your slivers, or Bone Splitter Sliver, which is plus two. And Bone Size is better once you get the first uh, Pump Sliver on the battlefield, but because I don't feel reliable enough in doing that uh, when there's only eight, I think that Bone Splitter Sliver is better when I just have a bunch of random uh, one-power dorks going on. Even though this would let me attack into Lingering Souls a little more reliably, I'm not horribly concerned about that. Um, this card is actually, it's kind of funny because I, after playing it the first time, I was like, oh, wow, this is sweet. And I came to the realization is that this is basically the best possible collected company you can hit because it's just like always hits two pump slivers. That's just the best thing possible, right? Um, yeah. I also enjoy the fact that uh, <laughs> Bone Splitter Sliver uh, prevents you from adding another rare to the deck, which is pretty nice. The, the lands are... Not in the uh, non-rare range, but, you know, I think that's a price of owning some staples. You don't have, like, weird archetype-specific cards that are just, like, hard to find. Um, I'm thinking, like, Gorio's Vengeance or whatever. Um, you just have a bunch of silly sliver comments and, I guess, Gale Rider sliver. Um, anyways, looking at the sideboard, I've kept it really simple. I don't want to muck around with cards that... Uh, are hard to cast and unreliable. Like, I need something... I need a mana wrestler to cast them. So I've just kept just the things that I can reliably do. Not try to spread my hate thin. Just go hard on the matchups. I think I'm going to free roll because of it. So I have Graveyard Hate for Dredge. It's split up a bit. I don't know if the split should be, like, 3-1 or whatever. I think that there's times where you want the mix against them. Um, like, Relic can stop, like, Stinkweed and Dredge Chains where Cage can't, which might be relevant. Um, Relic also lets you have a card that technically does something against Living End, even though I'm probably pretty sure you can't beat that deck anyways, but that's not the point. Um, but yeah, Cage is definitely the more powerful card of the two against Dredge, because it shuts off their actual explosive draws, and if they have to go slow mode against you, I feel like you should win. Also shuts off Conflagrate, which is nice. Um, I have some Dismembers for when you need to pick off a random big creature. Uh, those are times where you can board out some of the, like, random stuff, like, uh, an extra mana west sliver or something, or like a random mind lash sliver. And then I have the two obvious three drop slivers siphon sliver to defeat burn um, and other aggro decks. All slivers having lifelink is pretty uh, hard for decks that are trying to uh, <laughs> aggro you out to beat. And then harmonic sliver, which is basically the end game against affinity. Um, you destroy all of their permanents and then they die. Uh, it's. There's... Yeah, you just, you just do that. Um, having played the matchup, I will say that um, once you have Harmonic Sliver, there are some weird balancing acts of, like, deploying your slivers. Like, I saved a Mind Lash Sliver. Like, you can sequence in weird out-of-order ways to make this card a lot better. So that's just something to watch for, um, just to get the maximum number of triggers off of it. Anyways, uh, playing the games with this deck is not super complicated, I'm not going to lie. But uh, it is fun, because it's pretty silly. So, uh, we will see how these matches go. I've played a few. I won most of them. 
Um, I lost to Grim Lava Mancer. That card's not fun for this deck, even with the Fusion Sliver. So hopefully none of our opponents play that, and uh, we'll see if we can win.